To another anime episode review. I am the rat, and this is the rat's nest. I'm joined as always by Kyle. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, everyone. We are back today to talk about Mushoku Tensei Season 2, Episode 16. I think this is because this is Episode 4 of Season 2, Part 2, if I'm remembering that correctly, because I can't hit exit on my stupid thing and, my, and I still have it full screen. This was a pretty great episode. Yeah, Episode 4, Part 2. How... <laughs> What 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 do you think, Kyle? You you like it? You hate it? Uh, uh, no, like is it peak absurd. fiction? I mean, it is, but you don't have to say that because you know it's just saying the obvious. It was nice to get some old characters returning because you know this this past season, or like the, the first half of season two, you know a lot of a lot of new characters, a few old ones, but you know mo even if they were old ones like uh, Elena Lee's, like we we got more expanded upon with them, so. Yeah. We kind of got got their proper introduction, you know. We had seen Cliff and Elena Lee's and Zenoba and yeah, all them before, and there, but this, and... this, you know, they get formally introduced, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was it was nice to get you know established characters that we had seen a long time ago back in season one, and just you know get the have them come back and you know see how they changed uh, in the past however many years, especially Aisha and Norn. No, which absolutely. Really I, I loved getting to see them, getting to see Rougier again. It's just, I I should Norn. I mean, I I mean, they're two of my favorite characters. I love all of the characters in Mishoku Tensei, um, but I should Norn especially just. I'd say because of their relationship with Rudeus, or like they're like his siblings. It and like makes that, a that, that seems like dynamic. simple, but like it like it's 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 weird and it's cool kind of to, to like see him interact with the siblings like I, like I don't know I'm wording that horribly <laughs> let, let me I, I, I get I guess uh, what, how I would phrase it is it's more special because of the unique family dynamic that they have it's not just oh uh, Paul Zenith Rudy with two kids uh, kid sisters it's Paul cheated on his wife and Rudeus stuck like stuck his neck out for uh lilia was her name lilia yeah lilia yeah so like instead of you know getting rid of her and like you know having all this big drama rudeus was like no nah, it, it's like he he helped in that situation so it is almost like he had like they had two moms and he has two sisters or even though and this might getting this is getting a little bit ahead of ourselves where Aisha's crying and it's like oh well you're only you're why is she getting her way is it because she's more related to you by blood he's like hey 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 we're all like I treat you both you got you both are my sisters I'm not I don't give one special treatment so the, there's more to it than just a simple sibling dynamic and yeah. I, I, I I like what they do with it I just like him having siblings. Like that's just, that's just like neat to me. Like in the context of it being an isekai too, like having like yeah. a comparison, you know, between like like oh yeah, like like these are like like his like blood family. Like I like I don't know like how why that like ticks a box for me of like a coolness factor, but it is. And then it's also good uh, story wise because then you can compare his siblings in this world to his siblings from his past world. Yada yada yada. I don't know. That's a whole other thing. Also, uh, one last thing on that, you can see how much he's grown and matured as a person because if you if you took Rudeus, you know, before all the East Sky stuff happened, and we're just like, hey, take care of these two like kids, he wouldn't know what to fucking do. Yeah. Uh, well, because you know, as great. established in the episode, he doesn't know he doesn't much about know little much girls. About Little girls, he doesn't yeah. know much about little girls. Yeah, that that, <laughs> so. that doesn't that doesn't age poorly throughout any of season one. Um, what are you talking about? What you, anyways, anyways, so let's 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 just get right into it, right? Because we're already kind of starting to talk about it. I will also say, if you're new here, um, the way that we do things is Kyle knows absolutely nothing about Mushoku Tensei other than uh, stuff in the anime, and by anime that, I mean, he he knows he knows a good amount of stuff about Mushoku Tensei. Uh, but yeah, he's anime only. Uh, meanwhile, I have read all the light novels, read Redundancy, read Oblige, read ODT, all that. Dude, I freaking love ODT. ODT is great. Am I right, Kyle? Don't you love ODT? I have no frame of reference for ODT. It's great. It's kind of like it's kind of like DKT, you know. 
I know you're so a big anyway. fan of DKT. <laughs> So there, there, so there are no spoilers other than other than the the funny jokes that I tell Kyle. Yeah, but let's get right into it. So Kyle, Kyle, recap, recap us the episode. Let's let's talk about what happened. So I'll, I want to try breaking it up into like thirds. You know, the beginning parts with uh, Rougeard, the longer middle sequence where you know with Aisha and Orin, and then the, the end sequence, which is we'll we'll get to it. We'll get but, there. Starting out, uh, we get to see Rougeard and Rudeus just, you know, sitting in his room or one of like one of the living rooms, just having conversation, catching up. And it was just, it was just super nice to see Rougeard again. I don't know what it is. I liked Rougeard a lot as a character in season one. So just getting to, even if only for a brief moment, you know, getting to see him again and just talking about things with Rudeus. Uh, what, was they, they th- what did they talk about? They talked about like how they've been uh he asked rougeard asked rudeus uh oh uh where's eris and that brought about some uh not good memories yeah basically i think one of the cool things about seeing rougeard again right to me is seeing him like remembering how much of a part of rudeus's life that he was early on like you know for the three whole years that they traveled together right yeah. Um, how much of a part of his life that he was. And he just left and then and now he's back in this like new part of Rudeus's life. Like he had never met Sylphie before. He had never been up to uh Renoa before, right? So but 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 here he is. It's like it's like that's like weird. It's like it's like a blast from the past. Yeah, and he gets to see, you know, because uh, R- Rougeard hasn't changed as much since yeah. uh Rudeus has been. It's just he... been three years essentially. Yeah. And- for his, I mean, for how long they live, I mean, I don't know how long their full lifespans are, but they live for a while. Yeah, Shepard, Shepard lived for a while. Rougeard himself is over 500 years old. Dang. And then, you know, just him, you know, getting to see Rudeus and just see how much he's uh, grown and changed. You know, he's a, he has a lot more responsibilities. He's married. He has a house. He's going to school. It, it, it's pretty cool. I think that'd be pretty cool from uh, Rougeard's perspective. Yeah. I will say this is where a first little difference comes from the light novel. Um, Isn't so much the conversation so much as it is the framing of the conversation. Because in the light novel, their conversation is pretty tense. Really? It's it's tense and it's kind of awkward. And so, like, I'm fine with the way they adapted it. I like it in its own way, but it is different from the light novel. Um, The light novel places a lot more of the emphasis and, you know, it was in here. But it, it's made very clear that uh, Rougeard, I mean, I wouldn't say disapproves of Sylphie, um, but it's basically or with Rudeus, like, Yeah, he's, he's like, he's like, why isn't she here? He's like, he's like, what happened? And then Rudeus is like, oh, well, you know, whatever she said, all this and that happened. And he was like, you know, but what if you what if you just misunderstood her? Like, he's like, you know how Eris is. He's like, she's not good with words. Like, yeah, like th- this one was... Whatever. And so it's the first time that Rudeus really sits down and thinks, like... Like, kind of gets to say an objective voice in on the situation. And and the conversation itself is relatively uncomfortable. Because Rudeus doesn't really know how to talk to Richard a little. And that one line kind of transferred over where he's like, what what did we used to talk about? Um, like, that, that line kind of had, I guess, to say, quote-unquote, more context in the light novel. I had a different con. Yeah. I think it still were. It just had a, this entire conversation had a different connotation. Um, but it is interesting to see the differences there. Yeah, because this it, one it, felt more like, uh, it felt more mellow, relaxed, yeah. where it's like... Just casual, it, it, catching up. Yeah, like like two like two friends talking to each other after a long time. One of them's like, oh, maybe you misunderstood her. And he's like, oh, I, I, I guess I could have. And just more more calm, whereas it's like, but, but where where is she? And then he like bangs the staff on the ground. Where where's Eris? Yeah, it wasn't like ah, confrontational, <laughs> but it it was a, it was a little more tense. It definitely had a different feel to it. Um, like it, it, guess, it's it's not a chill mellow thing. Uh, I, suppose... I I kind of knew that coming in. I I I read some stuff as to uh, what people thought about the episode because I th- I told you I'll say it on recording last night. I had a nightmare they adapted this episode poorly. <laughs> this is such a random thing to do. So I had to wake up this morning and check out reviews for it. And I was like, because we're recording this the day that this video is going live on Monday. Because yesterday I was just busy, didn't didn't work out. Uh, so I, I looked at I looked at some people's like like what they thought about it on different places. 
Um, and so that was one thing. They, they mentioned the Rougier conversation had a, had a different connotation. And some people dislike it. I can understand not liking it. Um, I get it. You know, it's I mean, not, I mean, it, not being faithful. But also, I guess the anime kind of... Because right now, it feels like we're in a very calm before the storm. I don't know what the storm is. I don't know what's going to happen. But I feel like there is a storm that's coming. And they just... They want to try to keep this calm you know calm light-hearted like oh you know working through things here or there kind of phase until shit really hits the fan so i guess they didn't want to make anything uncomfortable through deus right now because the anime is trying to stockpile all his pain suffering and misery up until the end of the season oh no i really i think it's more a, a, a pacing thing uh, that's where, where they just you know they had a couple things he had to get through this episode um, and so I think it fits more with the flow of the episode to not have the conversation be like super tense and a super big focal, focal point. Um, which I mean, like, like, like I said, I'm fine with, I'm completely fine with how the anime portrayed it. Cause I, you still got across the, the same ideas through the dialogue. Um, you know, but, it, but, it, but it is different, which is always interesting. Uh, but that's just adaptation for you. Uh, some yeah. stuff is going to be different. Um, you know, some stuff in the manga is different. <laughs> some stuff in the so... manga is very different. Um, but, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with how they did it. I remember after the conversation, uh, he was going to leave at, at like the next day and every day he's like, whoa, 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 dude, you, you didn't, you didn't even have breakfast, dude. Come on. Wait, wait, hang on. So did the, the buddy's daddy stuff happen like as he was going to leave, right? Or yeah. was that before? Okay, yeah. So he was going to leave and then Rudeus is like, hey, come on, man, at least have some breakfast with us, dude. So then he does and, you know, he's getting ready to leave and you know, Aisha and Norn are there and he's saying goodbye to them. And uh, I forget what he says to Aisha, but with Norn, Norn's like, I want to come with you. I don't want to be here. And, you know, Rudeus and them are all looking kind of like, oh, you know, there's like not yeah, happy. Just get married already, you two. I mean, Rishi anyway. does love children. He does. And you know who doesn't know a lot about children? I know a guy who doesn't know a lot about children. If you exclude all of season one, then yes. Look, don't stop making sense, okay? Just keep going. <laughs> so then uh, he, he says, like, no, Norn, like, you, you can't come with me. Uh, you should you should stay here. Trust in Rudeus like you would trust in me, okay? And, you know, I mean, Nor Norn really can't... Norn can't really just object and run off, so it's like, okay. And so I know... I forget what happens in between that, but he does leave the house... And as he's leaving, uh, Rudeus, like he, I think either he sees it from in the house or he like goes outside to say something, but he sees Rougier talking to Buddy Daddy. And this actually that... happens before. It happens the first time he goes out and he's like, stay for breakfast. That's when it happens. Oh, you lied to me. No, I didn't. I, that's what I said. Oh, well, my bad. So. Yeah, you're cooked. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, well, that happened before then. Yeah, uh, where he walked outside and he had that uncomfortable conversation, or it seemingly ten not seemingly it was it was yeah they they kind of eyeball on each other you know, the, the bedroom eyes you know, uh huh. And so then uh, at that it was at that point where I asked uh, Brandon to pause and fill me on on like some stuff that happened. So yeah, things were things were not they, there's some bad blood between them. Uh huh. And there he's like, some bad blood between them, in fact. He's like, I, I was surprised to see Buddy Daddy here. And then Rudeus is like, well, he did come all the way here to see me. And then he's like, oh, yeah, it sounds just like him. Yep. And he's, But then he also he promised that he, was, he wasn't going to fight. He wasn't going to pick a fight. Yeah. And then the breakfast stuff happens, apparently. So uh -huh. then after all that, and then Roger, uh, he sets out again. And he leaves Aisha and Norn in the miserable company of Rudeus if you went by Norn's perspective. Yeah. Like, dang. Ruger is really back in the series for a solid five minutes. It's wild. Ruger stands had to be going crazy with this episode. Dude, they did. Dude, Ruger Ruger stands getting the one scene of Ruger and for the next 15 years. Mm, man, I'm stuffed. It's like Shanks cameos, yeah. Great. Uh, okay, so then after that, we move on to the next big portion of the episode with uh, Aisha and Norn and Rudeus trying to, you know, send them to school, apparently. So I remember it starts out where, you know, they're sitting there on the couch and they're just, you know, talking, trying to catch up. Aisha really just like, oh, no, no, hang on. 
they doesn't it start with them giving him like the box from Paul? Like yeah, the little he gets some tools. He gets he gets some gadgets gets and some, gizmos. He gets some, some doubloons. He gets some wealth even. He gets some assets. And there are two notes. One is just a copy of the the letter that he originally sent to Rudeus, which I guess was just in case it didn't pan out. That's and very the, smart. Yes, it's it's in case the um the original letter got there after uh, yeah. I should have it. Very, and, very, very wise connotation. You would definitely be spoiled if you watched the opening. And uh, the other was a request to send Aisha and Norn to school. And both of them had different takes on it. Aisha was at first was like, I don't, I don't want to go to school. I want to stay here and I want to be your housemaid. So... Rodeus is, you know, like, oh, at least at least try to take the entrance exam. Like, if you, uh, my my opinion, what we do next will go on how you perform. And, and then I you said she was going to fail, which I thought was really funny. Does he know? That's wild. I knew, like, two minutes after. Not even. And then, uh, I forget. Norn's reaction was a bit more, like, you know, cold shoulder, more reclusive. And... Hang on. So she asked to stay in the dorm. That's in later. The next okay, okay. Yeah, later. Yeah, so, so you're going to have to help me clear some things so up. So what this was, was Norn was basically like, oh, well, I don't want to take the test. Like, I'm going to fail it. Because Norn, oh, Norn isn't yeah. as bright as, as Aisha. And, and Aisha was like, he was like, he's like, oh, well, he's like, well, that's fine. He's like, you know, they'll take anyone who can pay. Uh, he, he, he words <laughs> oh. it very poorly. Right? I, I and, remember And then Norn's like, well, if that's how I'm getting in, I don't want to get in. You know, she wants to get in on her own merits. She wants to get in because she because she deserves to get in, not just because, uh, you know, they're going to pay. And then that gets Aisha and Norn into a little spat uh, where we can see them. OK, I, I remember back and now. Forth. I remember and Norn's now. like, Norn's like, well, I like I don't want that. He's just saying that he's just going to pay my way in. he's just going to bribe them to take me in. And Aisha's like, like, you idiot, like, be kind, like, be nice. Like, we were told to come here. We were told to be with him. Like and you're and you're just gonna you're just gonna spit in his face like that, you disgusting little wretch, you you miserable little bug, you just you 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 creature, you you absolute buffoon, you rat. Yeah, no 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 no. I'm in the <laughs> basement. That's where I live. I live in the basement. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, I yeah, I come out and I play my part in Turning Point Four. That's what I do. I'm just waiting for another five years for season three to come out. <laughs> So, yeah, after uh, Norn leaves the room, you know, Aisha's like, I hate, I hate children, or I hate immature people who don't know their place. And then Rudez is like, hey, that was a little rude. Be nice to your sister, okay? <laughs> like, just, like, just like, come on, fine. come on, be nice. Come fine. on, be nice. Be nice. I guess I will. So then uh, it cuts to Rudeus talking with uh, Sylphie in the bedroom, and he's like, oh, God, I don't know what I'm going to do with these two. And so then Sylphie's just like, hey, like, it'll work things out. I'll help, like, I'll help you with it. Well, I promise things are going to be fine. And so then after that, uh, it shows their entrance exam results. Aisha got a perfect score. So, yeah. oh, so sorry. So the one thing from the prior scene with uh, Sylphie, I, I just remembered it. I thought I was missing something and I just remembered. Uh, she said, like, Aisha will be fine no matter what Aisha does. I think Aisha will be fine in life. She's a, she, she's she's pretty smart girl. Uh, it's Norn who I'm concerned with. So then, you know, it, it shows that, like, yeah, she was right. Aisha got a perfect score. So Rodace is like, I, 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 I guess if you don't feel like you want to go, I mean, if you're smart enough, like, because Aisha's whole stance earlier was like, school has nothing left to teach me. And so. She got a perfect score. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Like you, you, you scored, you scored perfectly. So yeah, I guess you don't need to go. You can stay here. And he's like, ah, I guess, I guess Norn. I, I'm a little bit, a little bit more concerned about Norn's score. And so you know, they say like, hey, if you want to go to school, sure. And Norn's like, well, can I go stay in the dorms then? Which you know, kind of awkward at first. But Rodeus is like, I guess I could just shoot her down. But then he gives in. And he's like, you know what? Yeah, you can stay in the dorms. Uh, here, let me let me let me let me let me drop in here a little bit. The rat coming out of the basement. I understand. So yeah, no, no. I said wait till turning point four, dude. Okay, we got a whole other turning point before then. I come out at turning point four. 
Five years, ten at least. Ten at least, please. But so we got Aisha and Norn, right? So Aisha is is insanely smart. If you haven't picked up on that yet, uh, if you don't remember that from Sharone, Aisha Aisha is 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 a genius. She is she is extremely extremely smart. Um, that, Norn yeah. is not that. Um, so, you know, Norn didn't do as well on her interest exam, but she still passed. She just did slightly below average for her age. And so, you know, her day is like, oh, you know, what kind of what, what kind of focus do you want? All this kind of stuff. And she, she says that she wants to live in the dorms. And then I just like, uh, no, she's like, dad said that we were supposed to live with with Rudeus. You're like, you idiot, you buffoon, you creature. And then Rude, Rudy's like, OK, no, wait, 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 chill. Let her cook. Let her cook. Let her cook. Exactly. You get it. Yeah. And so then he's like, well, I could just outright deny her. He's like, but she probably like probably took her a lot of courage to ask that. To ask to be able to live in the dorms. He's like, he's like, he's like, no, he's like, that could be good for you. So yeah, says, make some friends, that. get out, be active, you know, be be out there in the world with like the yeah. people that you go to school with. And he so he says like, yeah, you can go. And I, th- and I think then... that's very mature of Rudeus. We get a little bit more of his thought process in the light novel. Um, where he's like, he's like, this is like really weird to send her off to school. He's like, but I do think it'd be best for her. And he's like, you know, she probably, you know, I think it shows how mature Rudeus is really here, right? Yeah. Now. Um, I, I think we get to see that kind of a lot this episode, as you know, uh, he's he's their big brother, but he's also, I mean, he's he is the the authority figure of the house. Yeah, uh, he's doing. Know, good. He's, he's kind of stepping into a surrogate fatherly role. Um, because that, that's, that's what Paul has left him with, uh, with, with, with bringing them here. Um, I think that it's really cool to get to see that side of Rudeus, Um, cause you know, we, we've seen him, you know, be a, be a child and be, be a young man. And, and you know, now, now he's married, but he's still like goofy, you know, with the boys. Um, so we're getting to see this side of Rudeus where he's like, has to be an, an authority figure and has to be mature. Uh, I, I always love getting to see it. And I think that it's really cool to see here. And then you can explain what yeah. happens next. Yeah. So then after that, uh, Aisha gets really huffy and pissy and upset because she's like, well, why, why how come Norn gets her way? How come Norn gets the special privilege? Like, you know, Paul shouldn't say this, but it's like in the context of what's happening. Like Paul told us we're both supposed to stay here. How come she doesn't have to? How come she gets all the special treatment? Is it because... Uh, is she's more related to you by blood is that it huh because my mom's like a concubine is that is that it like is that am i just lower on the the chain here and he's like hey 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 i think you both equally as my sisters that doesn't change anything that's not what lilia is i'm just making i'm just making the decision that feels best for norn here a very very mature way to you know step in and try to explain the situation to aisha yeah I also really like here how Aisha says, and she kind of echoes the the sentiment earlier. But she's like, she's like, Nora doesn't try. She's like, I tried. She's like, I tried. I, I studied hard. I did my best, and I got a perfect score. And she says, she's like, Norn didn't. She's she's like she's like Norn didn't get a good score. Yeah, so she why did, she did bad on the test? So much. why does she get what she want? I I had to do this. I had to reach this bar to get what I want. Why did do, why doesn't why didn't she have to reach the same bar? And it kind of echoes back to like, be kind, you know. Yeah, it's like, you know, they're, they're two different people, and I think their day has handled the situation really, really well. But I think it's it's also interesting here to see where we, I think we get a really good idea of both of the sisters' characters in this one episode, which I, I think is really impressive of, of the writing and the anime to be able to showcase um, that distinctly. You know, Norn's character, which is a little more simpler, um, and we still haven't seen all of it. Um, yeah. But Aisha's character, I think we got to see um, pretty well this episode. Full display, yeah. It's getting to see, you know, where she puts on this this air of maturity, and she is a genius, and she is super smart. Um, but at the same time, she's still a ten year old kid, you know. Yeah, she's like, like the, the universe's you, you, version of Sheldon. Yeah, <laughs> do not call Aisha Sheldon, bro. It's Basinga. Sheld- dude, he does. Dude, he does. Mm. <laughs> Aisha does not say Bazinga, okay? It doesn't happen. I was thinking what good Aisha spoiler I could give with that, but I was like, yeah, nothing really flows, so I can't make a joke. But Yeah, so after their conversation, uh, it starts up where Aisha starts being... Oh, no. So 
Norn's about to get sent off to school, and Rodeus is telling her all this basic stuff like, you need to brush your teeth when you get up before you go to bed, you need to like bathe, you need to take care of yourself. And the last rule he said, it's just kind of like back and forth of like this basic rule, okay, this basic rule, okay, this basic rule, okay. And then he says, you need to visit home at least once every 10 days. And that's when Norn's like, huh, why? Why do I have to do that? And Rodeus is like, because I, I want to make sure that your well being is okay. I want to make sure that you are, you know, alive and that you're fine. Because yeah, he cares about her. And once every, that's pretty generous. Once yeah. every 10 days, that's, that's not bad at all. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and he knows too that he'll run into her at school, and we see that yeah, in the last third of the episode, where you know that they're, you know, they're on the there. same school, they're around each other, but um, they don't really talk. Like that, you know, being at home is where it, I, he understands that like Norn isn't as warmed up to him as like Aisha is. So it's like I want to give you your distance, but I just yeah. a little bit of time to make sure that you are okay. Huh? You know, you're your own person. I respect that. I respect that. You know. Being here would be a little bit suffocating because I know you, you don't really like me. I know Aisha is really hard on you. But just yeah. come back here every once in a while. So I, then I really like it. I really I really like it. We, we move into the last third of the episode where a month goes by. Uh, we see, you know, get a montage of like Aisha doing stuff around the the house. You know, the cleaning, all the bathing, all the Rudeus not really understanding what uh, little girls or anything scene. Uh, all that stuff. So... You know, he sees Norn, and Norn just kind of gives him the the side eye, like just for the stink. I just doesn't even, I guess, doesn't even register him. She just looks ahead and just keeps on moving. And Rudeus is kind of down. It's like it's been about a month, and she's made no new friends. And he's like sitting in the room moping, and he's like, ah, oh, man. And, and up then... walks trouble. <laughs> <laughs> The two beast people girls whose names it's like Prisha, what are their names? Linnea and Persana. Persana, Linnea and Persana. I like for the life of me, I just can't remember Persana. their names. I don't know, maybe Persina. Persina, more like after what happens. So, so true. They're like, oh boss, like you look down in the dumps, and he's like, yeah, he's like yeah, yeah, it's been it's been kind of rough recently. And they're like, oh, well, we noticed that, and we have a gift for you. And they pop him a little, like, little sack, a little, little leather bag or whatever. And uh, they're like, now, okay, look, open this up when there's no one around. Like, you, you go home, you find, you go, you go in your basement, you say hi to the rat, and you open this up with him. You just don't, don't open it anywhere else. Why and so he's like, want it. Don't put Sorry. this on me. <laughs> Dude, don't but you, attach you, my name to this. You and Rudeus also don't know anything about uh, little girls. It's, it's okay. You're right. You're right. I don't. Yeah, you don't have to leave the basement until uh, 20.4, but he can come down there and visit. Yeah, exactly. So he's walking down out or something. the hallway after getting this mysterious bag, and Luke's like, um, Rudeus, can, can, you, can you come with me to the student's, like, office please like the council office room so he's like yeah okay what's this about he gets in there everyone's kind of acting all like yeah awkward. sylphie looks mortified luke looks Sylph disappointed and ariel is just is just staring daggers into him and rudeus does not know what's happened and he's like so what's what's up why why all the the why is it so tense basically and and he was like, okay, Rudeus, it's story time. So as of recently, there have been these two, maybe sort of kind of beast people going around demanding that the first years basically like strip and give the no, give. No, 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 them... not necessarily first years. Oh, sorry. All breasted <laughs> girls with cute faces. He demands they demand that people of that type uh give them their underwear. And they collected a bunch of th these underwear and put them in a small bag. And they said, and they're on record for saying stuff like, oh, yeah, our boss would love this. And they're like, so we know who these two people are. We know who their boss is. And they're all looking at Rudeus. And it's like, so Rudeus, did they're you look sanction this? <laughs> and they're looking at the bag <laughs> that he's holding. And Rudeus is freaking out. It's like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I like that Daredevil scene. I just, the initial reaction to it, that was like, 
at the, out of all the stuff that's happened, you know, the stuff with like them getting married, it's been some like pretty mellow stuff, some serious stuff, some pretty like not a Hoshi's things. It was nice to have a, a breath of levity and just have like a pretty funny scene where Deus is like, oh my god, what did these two knuckleheads do? <laughs> uh, that was that was that was a great scene. And so, you no, know, he I clears up. It. I especially love like the facial expressions and everything in it. Yeah, no, Fitz uh, looks mortified at what he's seeing. Right. He cannot believe that there would be another fellow person who would go around collecting underwear, because who could do that? Who could do that, dude? Who even would do that? I certainly wouldn't. I'm staying. I'm staying plumb in my basement. I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah, you you don't know any you don't know anything about uh, girls with small physique. You don't know anything about that. I know nothing about them. Yeah, like Rudeus. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't. If you know all, if you know all the season one, if you know all the season one, yeah, exactly. Look, okay, if you if you want me to go in depth as to as to why season one d that doesn't even prove that if you if you want me so to in go in depth scene, about it, I we can. We see Rudea scolding the two. Yeah, that's what I thought. Run on the bench, run away. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They're all yeah. yeah. yeah they look yeah. in the very disappointed. Yeah. yeah. They're looking very disappointed. Rudea is scolding them. It's like I cannot believe that you two did that. Like, don't do that stuff. Do not do this ever again, please. And they're bickering like. Oh well, it's it's her fault, and then the other one's like, "Ah, oh, it's it's your fault," and then they're fighting, and then Norn walks by, just you know, kind of gives Rudeus like a, a dirty look, and then walks away, and they're like, "I fucking hate first years, yeah, first years are the worst." Girl, and he grabs her shoulders and goes, "Hey, that's my little sister." And they're like, "Oh, she's so lovely. Oh, she's so great." They're like, oh, she's so cute. What a what a little whippersnapper. Yeah, what a, what a little scam. <laughs> I love the complete 180 from, we should go teach, you want us to go teach her a lesson, boss? To, well, I liked him feisty anyways. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, and so then, uh, that, that was pretty funny too, getting the, the whole flip. And then it ends with, uh, we see Norn going back to her room and just putting up these curtains on her bed and just sitting there alone. And that's where the episode ends. Yeah, there was one extra scene where we saw whenever they were leaving the student council room, uh, Norn gets to meet Ariel, Luke, and oh Sophia. yeah, and Luke like escorts her back, yeah. and I, and I made the comment of be careful, Luke. If she breathes on you, your hip will give out. Dude, he's, he's it's Lalahi. It's so over for him. He's not even potential man, bro. He's just cooked. He's just he man. He steps onto the battlefield and just instantly becomes barbecue chicken. That's how he cooked goes, he is. That's how cooked he, goes, he is. He goes to pull the sword, and he's like, "Ah, oh, it's too heavy. I, I can't, I can't, I can't pull it from the sheath." Oh, it's I, I, pull, I pulled my hamstring trying to get my sword out of its sheath. Oh, ow! Quick, mage, boosting strength spell, please. Lend me, lend, lend me some strength, Alda Baron. This is this base is Rudeus we're up against. <laughs> this is Rudeus' sister we're up against. This is Norn Grey Rat we're up against. This is Leroy Grey Rat we're up against. You don't even know Leroy. <laughs> Leroy. Uh, but yeah, so all in all, great episode. Uh, I like seeing, you know, the return of these characters. Uh, seeing Rudeus being a bit more mature. Not a bit more mature. Seeing Rudeus basically put on, like, you know, the, the parent pants. It was cool to see. Because, you know, if you went by season one, it's like, he couldn't have done that. He's too immature. You got to see where his growth comes in and the advice and the decisions that he makes in taking care of his two sisters. And uh, I, I liked I liked the scene where he was about to be executed by his new wife. Yeah. For the treasons he committed of, well, he didn't steal them, but like, you know, having the pin. Which, for the record, as far as I him. remember, none of the underwear taken was Norn's. I, I thought that's what it was like gonna build up to. Yeah, no, but it did not. Thank no, thank thankfully. It yeah, did not. thankfully this is, this isn't a Fishman Island where that's a big plot point. This isn't a season one of a Shoku Tensei. This is season no, two. No, okay? shut, dude, shut up, dude. I will I will talk. I can talk. I can talk for a while on it. I can talk I for a while on it, dude. You you think you've seen Copium? You think you've seen Copium? Kyle, I'm an Attack on Titan fan who didn't immediately hate the ending. Okay, I look. I know Copium, right? You don't oh, know Copium until you talk wife, to me. And it just so happens to be the end of the episode. Ooh. 
Well, if you're listening to this episode, then obviously there's something you like. So make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling us what you thought about this episode. Maybe this time I'll even respond to them. That's wild. So I'm going to go edit this, and I'm going to read all the past comments to Kyle. Because I've been very busy, and I apologize that I have not been able to respond uh, to comments. But I will try to be good about that starting now. Uh, I will also give a clarification uh, that next week's episode will probably be delayed to everyone who cares. Uh, because I will be leaving for Hawaii. Um, so if, if you're in Hawaii within the next month, know that I am there with you and not in Rudeus' basement for a month. Um, I hope I can still bring my mic with me uh, on the airplane. I'm pretty sure I should be able to. Uh, so I should still be able to record episodes over in Hawaii. But next week's episode, at least, will be a little bit delayed. Uh, because I am leaving Sunday morning at 6 a.m. and flying down to Hawaii from our beautiful state of Washington and the beautiful state capital of Washington State, Seattle. Uh, so, with all that said, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you all next time for My Brother's Perspective. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Oh, bye. I think I said that wrong. Say yours again, Kyle.